Welcome back to another instalment of New Zealand's Bird of the Week, where in this video I will be talking about the Selvins Mollymork, typical medium-sized albatrosses that once been conspecific with another species are now distinct. I hope you enjoy. Selvins Mollymorks, as mentioned, are typical medium-sized albatrosses being black across their upper wings and overall being pale grey and white, with their bills being greyish green being around 90 through 100 centimetres in length and between 3.4 to 4.4 kilograms in weight, being among the largest of the mollymork or small albatross group. They were long considered to be a subspecies of the shy albatross, although this was later re-evaluated in 1998 by an article that noted differences between them, something later confirms with molecular analysis, which has shown that Selvins mollymorks and the closely related Chassam albatross are sister taxa, being distantly related to the shy albatross. Selvins mollymorks can be best distinguished from the Chassam birds by their larger size and grey bills, and from the shy albatross by their greyer heads. Such differences are however difficult to observe out at sea, however, and this explains the underrepresentation of the species in at sea surveys. Birds with their long wings are able to turn and fly effortlessly in wind currents, and so are able to precisely target prey, using their webbed feet for swimming and as rudders when coming into land on water or land. Their strongly hooked bills are effective in grasping prey, with the sharp edges on their upper mandible being used to slice up said prey into manageable portions. Birds are also able to extend their throats to swallow large prey when necessary though, giving them quite the unique look. They breed in large, densely packed colonies, being monogamous with shared incubation and chick care. Their nests are pedestals made of mud, guano, feathers and even bird bones they accumulate, and are used year after year if said structure remains intact breezing mainly on the Bounty Islands and Snare's western chain, as well as occasionally in the Chasm Islands. They lay a single white egg between August and September, with incubation taking about 65 to 75 days, with chicks fledging in February and April being independent afterwards. Juveniles then immediately depart New Zealand waters, and do not return until they have adult coloration, migrating to the seas of Peru and Chile, and even as vagrants in the South Atlantic and Indian Oceans. Their breeding sites are all free from introduced predators, although their main threats and why they are listed as vulnerable by the IUCN is due to human activity. Birds are familiar with commercial fishing vessels due to them often scavenging, and this has led to them being the second most common albatross species observed to be killed in New Zealand fisheries, with long liners and trawling operations being the most responsible. Their main breeding population at the Bounty Islands is estimated to be anywhere from 76,000 breeding pairs to 31,000 and either way face the threat of extinction due to their low reproductive rates and potential consumption of plastics. Given birds can survive for over 30 years, and so any loss of a bird is a big one. And with that, I thank you for watching this instalment of New Zealand's Bird of the Week. For next time, you are now able to vote for the Hodgins Water Hen, birds that have a history of nomenclatural instability that are now extinct. With that, I'll see you next time, whenever that may be.